If you're applying for the fall 24 or spring 24 term, hold on because this is important. Guys, in this video, I'm going to be giving you five such pointers that you can use to get ahead of 70 to 80% of the applicants that are applying without actually knowing these facts. All right. And trust me, there's a lot of people that don't know these facts and they just simply apply. Maybe out of these five, you yourself would know one or two, but it's important. And just by focusing on the remaining three, you can actually get way ahead of the competition. So stick around, let's begin. The number one way to improve your profile, to show the university that you can actually sustain in their program. What is that method? I understand you may be going for MBA, where work experience matters a lot. I understand you may be going for MS, where your actual CGPA matters a lot. But in both the cases, I can tell you that if your GPA is high, understand this, this GPA, the CGPA is actually, or this percentage is actually one single number that summarizes three to four years of your life. Three to four years of your life summed up in just one single number. That's what is important, guys. Trust me, it's important, but at the same time, I also understand that a lot of you watching this do not have the time to change your CGPA right now. Some of you may have it who are still in school. Some of you may not have it simply because you already graduated. Now, at this point, what I want to tell you is that we can move forward to point number two in such a case, and that is the single most important factor that I would say after CGPA, this is the most important one is if you've been watching me on my Instagram stories, I often tell you this, that the number two most important factor is research work because all the top universities understand this. The funding comes to the top universities because all of these people want to make donations to the groundbreaking research that is being done at XYZ University, Stanford, Harvard, some of the most research oriented universities. And you might not believe it, but the fact is that they are getting so much funding simply because of their research, both government and non-government bodies send them funds. Alumni send them funds simply because of the amount of research being done there. And what do you think the university is going to do with these funds? These funds go on to the funding of PhD applicants who are working with professors for the four to five years that they are working basically and gaining their PhD. They don't pay any tuition. These funds go to them and these funds go to masters or bachelors applicants who can perform research, who have proven that they can work well in a lab setting. How do you prove that? Simple. You go ahead and publish reputable research papers, reputable journals with reputable impact factors. If you're able to do that, guys, single most thing you will see. And we have actually done this research. We send thousands of applicants every single year. Every single year, we file more than 10,000 applications. And I can tell you that the people with research work have had significantly, significantly better results in terms of scholarships as compared to the people who did not have research on their profile. And I'm not talking about research in tier three journals. No, that's not us, but we're talking about the top tier one. So please add that, consider adding that. Now, if you are finding it difficult to actually go ahead, publish these papers on your own, reach out to us or go ahead, create a research group on yamgrad.com directly. Single most amazing resource I can tell you for research papers with guaranteed publishing. Go ahead, create a group over there or join a group that is suiting your interest. But please, please note every single day these research research pages update. So every single day there's more and more people joining in. Every single day there's new groups being created. So keep an eye out or create your own group so that you can actually go ahead and get a chance at being the first author. All right guys, enough about that. Let's move forward. Point number three. Build projects that matter. Now, what are the projects that matter? You might ask me, and that's a good question, I would say. Well, the kind of projects that are being used by other people, other users. There are a lot of people who are using this project. It can be as simple as PDF to Word, but if your PDF to Word is a website, if the software that you built, if this app that you built is a website or available on a phone application, and there are thousands of people using this, just a simple software, but you've been able to gain a lot of audience with that. That is a project that matters. You contribute to the open source. You contribute to the building of uh, let's say Android, you contribute to the building of VLC, could be anything. Many of these open source applications are amazing and we've been using them on a daily basis, but they're supported by people like you in the industry. Now this does not have to be technical, does not have to be something that only tech people can do, can be something that uh, someone in agriculture can do. You can contribute to something that is going to be used by a lot of people, maybe, maybe a software or it may be just bare metal machinery that you're building together, maybe, you know, Mac, just a simple machine that you build together, a mechanism that you build, or an experiment that you build, or a pesticide that you build, anything that you build, basically, that is being used by a lot of people. I hope you understand this is applicable to 
be able to every field out there, guys. But if you can actually make something that has a user base, trust me, that project will take you way farther than your CGPA and in some cases your research work as well. And of course, if you build something really big, you can go ahead and get a patent for that and really make a lot of money with that as well. But that's a whole different chapter. For this video, of course, we're not gonna go too deep. We're gonna go on to point number four, and that is SOPs. I'm sure you guys saw it coming. Either SOPs or essays, depending on whether you're going for MS or MA or MBAs, you know, regardless of what you're going for, PhDs, bachelors, essays or your SOPs, I hope you get the point. These are the, again, most important parts of your application. And I can tell you personally, working with uh, anyone who works with us, by the way, for SOPs, and you can reach out to me for that. My WhatsApp number is in the description, but whoever works with them, their, their SOPs by default are first written by Ivy League graduates, then they come in-house, then we run plagiarism checks, we make sure the story is proper, we make sure everything works, looks good, the flow is good, hundreds of other things that we check. Once we know that everything looks good, we deliver it to you, but you know, and after that you can get as many changes as you want but the whole point of this explanation is that the maximum amount of funds that go through this process that rotate through this process they rotate to the ivy league graduates simply because we don't want the sops to be subpar because at the end of the day the bigger game that we're playing is that we want to show we have gotten some of the best possible admits, best possible universities, best possible colleges, and only then we build our user base. That's our user base. If we can actually get people into some of the best top universities with full funding, if not full funding, 50, 60, 70, 80% funding, that's how we build it. To be able to build it, one of the biggest expenses that we have are of these Ivy League graduates. People who have already graduated or you know, our work are currently studying in Howard, Columbia, Cornell, these kinds of universities. Understand this, guys. This is an investment that has been worth it. It's a lot, but it's been worth it on our end as well. That's why we still pay these high charges. However, I completely understand, and this would be completely good actually, if you want to build your own SOP. That's in fact the most recommended route. If that's you and you don't need anyone's help, then take a look at these videos. These two videos are the ones that I have built on the perfect looking SOP. You can use these tips and tricks to actually make something that is very, very well worth it. Finally guys, point number five, and this one's gonna be a little bit vague, but I'll tell you how to go through it. And that is to focus on what matters. Now, what does this mean? And this is exactly what we do in the profile building as well. When we actually build up your profile, we search for ways to actually build a profile. The single most biggest thing that we focus on is finding out profiles in your niche, in your area of research, in your area of education that are similar to you, but have gotten amazing admits. If you have a GPA of 8.5 and you're targeting, let's say, Northeastern, but we see with 8.5, someone with us has targeted Berkeley and they've gotten in. We'll see what this person has done to get into Berkeley. We'll really go ahead and postmortem their, pro their profile and then we'll see, okay, this is present in their profile, but it's not in yours. We'll write it down. Then we'll check how many such profiles basically have that exact thing. Let's say it's a research paper, right? We'll check how many such profiles have research papers, but you don't. Then again, we we'll move on to the next thing. Patents. Okay. There's something else. Okay. Let's add that. This course, CFA, whatever. Okay. Let's add that. Then that's how we know that, okay, these are the top three most important factors that we want to present to you that you should be working on to actually build up your profile, get into the better universities out there. That's how profile building is done. And this is exactly, you know, I'd never revealed this process on camera, but this is important so i think you guys need to know if, if you're doing it by yourself and this is the process guys go ahead deeply research and study those profiles find those profiles and if possible chat with them know more about their profile know more about where they published the papers how what kind of a reputation was in those in those journals right all of those things figure that stuff out guys focus on what factors are there that you can add to your profile that other people already have. All right, I hope this helps. I don't want to make this too long, but if you need my help or if you need to know what kind of universities you can get into, reach out to me. My WhatsApp number is in the description. I'll be more than happy to connect with you. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, connect with me on Instagram, and uh, goodbye until next time.